Well, my first few steps in Livonia, after having been robbed and put to sleep, if you will, by bandits, were eventful. Not only did I meet a quite diverse and colorful bunch of people who ended up being helpful and kind, giving me my first interviews with my new camera, I found a weapons trader who would help me get a few things to keep myself safe. But I also met the Blue Armbands, the first group who professed open dislike for reporters like me. After I decided to remain friendly and to not respond to their taunts for the time being, my new companions and I made it to a town called Brenner, where survivors had apparently created something like a safe zone. Okay, now we are getting, getting a belt. I want to get a belt. Hello, gentlemen. This is a Radio? Do they have radio now? Hello. Howdy. I see you have a press uh, a press vest. Are you are you with the press? Uh, yeah, I was uh, with AAM, you know, World News. Oh yeah, the, uh, hi. Um, my name is Tobias. I you made it, might have heard of me, Tobias Schreiber. I I am with uh, Reuters. Oh, nice to meet you, man. Uh, yeah, I think I don't know, maybe seen some of your stuff. What 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 are you what are you working on right now? I'm working on getting the way out of here. Yeah, same. I I, I try to I'm chronicle this. I try to chronicle everything uh, and then get get the fuck out of here because I feel like with the um with the isolation of the country, there's probably a lot of stuff happening that nobody sees outside of Livonia, and that's you know that's impossible. Yeah, I mean, I was here. Uh, I was I was attached to some. Uh, Marine Corps guys who were doing some thinning and stuff. They all, I think they all got out, but I don't know. I'm gonna head, gonna head south to the like, Polish border or something. Hopefully get over there. Hey, you being a colleague and all, would you answer a few questions for me on camera? I'm just trying to chronicle everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, man. Okay, I'll do it right here if, if I help. may. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I slipped. Oh, I'm very sorry. It slipped out of my hand. Alright, this damn thing never really works, but here we are. Okay, I found this colleague uh, who actually even has a press vest. I might have actually, I might have to get one of those myself um, and a press helmet even. Uh, hello, um, it's very nice to meet you. Could you state your name, your affiliation uh, for the camera, please? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, Frank Maxim. I'm uh, AAN World News, or, or was at least. I don't know if I've still got a job, but uh, yeah, I've just been. Okay. Well, Frank, um, you know, now uh, uh, amongst us journalists, amongst us reporters, how does this feel to you? Uh, because I'm going to be honest with you, to me, it feels a little bit like um, everything that happened here is being like, you know, like uh, we say, we say unter, unter, unter den Tisch, uh, uh, like, like it's being swept under the carpet um, and, and for the international oh, yeah, community, yeah. they try not to see it. How do you, what's your, what's your feeling? Uh, from what I've heard, they, they definitely see it, and they're definitely doing something, but I don't know if it's the right thing they're doing. Don't know if you heard about the uh, the big fight down south, I think a couple of days ago. I some did Some NATO not. boys dropped in, and uh, some locals lit them up. Put oh down my a couple god. helicopters. How is it? That's, that's another interesting thing. Every time I speak to someone who saw something bad happen, NATO is involved. Um, they are supposed to be a peacekeeping unit. They are supposed to like bring stability. But I heard of like horrible acts. I heard of of um, executions, like summary executions and stuff. And people don't like them around here. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't there, but I met a guy who was, and he he handed. <coughs> it, you, you can have a look, actually. I've, I've got it somewhere. Oh yes, I would love that. So this was the uh, I think the briefing that the uh, NATO team had. So we passed it on to me. Oh wow, I would love to check that out. One second. Just turn on the turn off the camera. Uh there we go. Yeah, find it. Okay, con team mission briefing situation in Augusta Westland AW15 Wild Calong to Nico has crashed south of the impact zone in a deforested area. Helicopter calls and super 5169 containment team of four soldiers can turn on stack. I mean the surviving crew will last in retreating to the west. Small containment team will be inserted. Search and rescue the missing team members. Execution. Four six man containment team will be inserted. A team will find some team members that are alive. A combat readiness. Four man team. Six man team. Other assets. Command and communication. 
radio. Oof. This is an admin and logistics helicopter support battery command and communication. Command. All infected persons are to be neutralized once positively identified. Okay. Civilians must be told to keep reasonable distance from the team or risk, or risk being shot. The order must be repeated three times loudly and clearly. If ignored three times, the core squad are permitted to fire a warning or wounding shot depending on the judgment of squad members. If still not heeded, deadly force is authorized? On civilians? People, persons brandishing weapons in hand must be told to put their weapon away three times loudly for deadly force. It's authorized. They are... They are sanctioning deadly force on civilians? They just what? feel everyone here is one of those, uh, like, infected, parasite people. That's crazy. That's like a blanket up to shoot everything that seems yeah. a little bit off. Not good. You, you can hang on to that. I don't think I'll get over the, okay. uh, over the board with that. The board yeah. Me yeah, I'll, be I'll, I have that. I'll take that, definitely. I, I, I put it in front of the camera and, like, film it so it's on the tape as well. That's crazy. You, uh, I also got a, a couple of tapes. Uh, someone seems to have smuggled some uh, news tapes from outside over the border. I don't know if you've, you've heard any of them. No, I have nothing, I'm afraid. Well, there's a couple here you can have a listen. Okay, yeah. thank you. I need a player of some sort, but... Ah, you have it. Good evening, I'm Fiona Hislop. This is AA in World News. Tonight, we focus on the ongoing situation in Livonia, where Belarusian forces continue to occupy the Sapokin Triangle under the pretext of containing the deadly Livonian parasite. The Sapokin Triangle, a small region of southeastern Livonia, has been at the center of a tense standoff between Belarus and Livonia for decades. Belarusian forces entered the area last year under the guise of containing the Livonian parasite that has plagued the region. I get Russia vibes. However, many believe that Belarus's true motives lie in annexing the territory, as they attempted to do in 1999. The failed attempt led to international condemnation and caused Livonia to seek NATO membership, and the Sapokin Triangle remains a highly contested area to this day. The United Nations and several other countries have condemned Belarus's actions in Livonia, calling for an immediate withdrawal of their forces. Officials have also accused Belarus of using the Livonian parasite as a pretext for their military occupation. The Livonian Prime Minister, Karolina Balic, said from exile in Warsaw recently, We will not stand idly by while our sovereignty is threatened. Belarus must respect our borders and withdraw their forces immediately. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko said, We are only here to help contain the Livonian parasite and ensure the safety of our citizens. We have no intentions of annexing the Sapokin Triangle. Damn. The situation in Livonia remains tense, with no resolution in sight. We will continue to monitor the developments in the region and provide updates as they become available. Fiona Hislop, reporting for AAN World News. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, this seems, it seems like they're using it as a, you know, pretext to attack. Yep, that's that's what the uh, that's what they're worried about. You know, we've tried it before. Do it again. Has anybody been down there to one more, the, to report? Got one more tape. It's a bit more interesting, I think. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you. It's so well made. Good evening. I'm Fiona Hislop, and this is AA in World News. Rumors are swirling tonight about a potential breach in the Livonian containment wall in Lithuania. The wall, which was built to keep the deadly Livonian parasite contained, has been a source of stability and security for the region. Reports of a breach in the wall first surfaced earlier today, with some eyewitnesses claiming to have seen a heavier than usual military presence at one sector of the wall. The rumors quickly spread across social media, causing panic and fear among the residents of Lithuania. However, the Lithuanian government was quick to deny the rumors, releasing a statement assuring the public that there has been no breach in the containment wall. Hmm. Officials have urged residents to remain calm Can you hear it, Chad? in the security measures that are in place. I can't make it louder. One government official said, 
We can confirm that there has been no breach in the Livonian containment wall. Our security forces are on high alert and are closely monitoring the situation. We urge all residents to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activity immediately. Despite the government's reassurances, many residents remain on edge, fearing the potential spread of the Livonian virus. The virus, which has a high mortality rate, poses a serious threat to public health and safety. As tensions rise in Lithuania, the world watches anxiously to see how the situation will unfold. We will continue to monitor the latest developments and bring you updates as they become available. For AAN World News, I'm Fiona Hislop. Crazy. Do you can you can you place on a map where this happened? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's way up north by the Lithuanian border. That's not not near here. That's a couple hundred miles away, you know. Right, so we cannot get there. Hmm. I would love to get there and report. Yeah, I wouldn't buy it. Frank, thank you so much for your time and and for all the information you gave me. Hope to see you again. Um, I I don't know if you have if you happen to have um a radio with you, but uh, let me shake your hand. Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of lost it, but uh, no. Good luck to you, man. Here, yeah, yeah. I don't oh. need this. I don't know if you got a camera, but hey, guys. Oh. I have an old camcorder. That's super it, nice. Thank you very much. Tell you what. Better camera. I have that too. Hey, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna go head south and hopefully get out of here. We embarked again on a journey to the local prison where more friendly survivors were set to dwell. Lost in my thoughts and trying to understand what was going on, especially with NATO and the blue armbands. I had forgotten to fasten my seatbelt. Where, where is that? And this is weird! Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh god. Oh no. Oh, fucking fuck, man. Oh no, man. I know. Oh. Fucking oh. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Don't get out. Perfect. Yeah, I'm not feeling too well right now. Oh, oh you want to over. Throw up if you need to. Oh, fuck. Oh. Run me over. Uh, okay, I was a bit heavy. Uh, I'm okay, sorry. Uh, I just need a few minutes, please. Uh, you you use these to clean oh. yourself. Yes, they can if you need. To Thank clean you. Yourself. I have nothing else. Oh, uh, here, here, either. here, here. Take fronta. I, I, I hate the smell of puke. You know, it's like oh, yes. to the doctor. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you stay away from yeah. it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Not, not too fast. Man, nobody Here, take some energy drink as well. Don't drink oh. too fast or you'll puke again. Oh. Yeah, that, I'm, 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 I'm better. I'm, I'm a bit better. Yeah, well. I hope there's more people like to corroborate what I'm saying, you know, like that they saw the same thing and maybe they get out of the country and then they can, you know, the more people say the same story, the more believable it is, right? So, that's... But so far I've seen a lot of people die, uh, and and I'm not sure if anybody see, saw the same thing I did, so that's why I'm... That's partially why I'm trying to, like, hang out with you guys, so... We have a story to, uh, a story to share, you know? This is a creepy yes. area. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, yeah. Sorry, I zoned out for a few minutes there. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, he it may be creepy, but this is uh, about the safest place you could ask for in terms of uh, that uh, that thing I telling you about. But oh, anyway, shit. Mm -hmm. shepherd gone again. Jesus oh, Christ. Uh, it's okay, man. He can uh, just just leave it, Rafael. Uh, hey, man. Hello. Sorry for uh, you know the wait, uh, but we having little accident on the road. <coughs> the news I heard about it from your friend. Uh, I think that was her. Hello. Sure ah, right. Hey. So, so, you so, sorry. The you. That I'm speaking to. You are the assistant doctor. No, not assistant doctor. No nurse. No doctor. I'm an aid worker. That's what I was. Okay. Well. You've probably seen, uh, you know, a few a few things. I'm uh, Toby. It's nice to meet you. I'm with Reuters. Oh, I was with Reuters, 
Um, so what I'm, I'm stuck here. So what I'm trying right now is to record as much as I can find and make a tape that I can get out of the country, maybe with myself, uh, and, and, you know, tell the truth uh, about what's happening here in Livonia, because I believe the international um, news is not really that accurate and they're trying to, like, hide what's going on here. Would you be okay if I asked you a few questions on camera? Yeah, sure. That's fine. Well, that's that's very kind. Let me just prepare everything, get a good shot of you. Are you okay, sir? Because it looks like you're looking in the sky. Maybe you maybe have back, back problems. You could, you could maybe <laughs> sit down. That will help you. So, could you please state your name, your age, and uh, your affiliation if you're with any group for us? Yeah, uh, my uh, full name is uh, Lukas Linge. I'm 29 years old, and I'm currently working with the clinic that is uh, in the village of Kanopki. Right, and where are you from, Lukas? I'm from Norway, originally. Okay, that's uh, that's quite a way from here. Like, how did you get to Livonia? I was working with a... Uh, uh, what's so it called here in English? Um, I forget, but uh, it's a... Uh, uh, Imagine Red Cross. It's a group called Nordgruppe. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Thank you. So, like... What is your experience here on Livonia? How long have you been here ultimately? Is there anything that you saw that you would like us to record um, for people outside of Livonia, the international community, to know? Are you okay? Have you have you lost people in, in, in a group, friends, whatever you want us to tell? Uh, okay. A lot has happened in the months that I've been here. Like I said, this has been here since um, August. I'm not sure we'll have many months. So it's 8, 9, 10 months or now, I think. When the walls around this region went up, Nordgruppe, the organization that, organization that I was a part of, started to evacuate uh, their people, uh, me included, really late. Very much as the construction was finishing up and the entire border was closed off by military personnel. The evacuation was not done in a organized or well manner, extremely disorganized, and which is why I'm still here. I see. So, some people who I've talked to have said that, especially those who've been here for, around for a while, is that NATO, who is here obviously as per their, their statutes, to be a peacekeeping force, have been committing a few pretty atrocious things, uh, like summary executions of people that they weren't sure if they're uh, survivors or not. I've seen a document that outlined a mission that they were on that uh, pretty much officially gave the order of uh, any any civilians close, if they don't respond too quickly to go away, that they are that it's okay to just shoot them, which is incredible. This is completely against what NATO is. Um, do you know anything about this? Is there anything you would like to say about this? In the beginning, I didn't experience that any of such things myself. I heard rumors about things like that happening. One second, Moose. You know? Thank you for the follow. But recently, if you know or not, then NATO forces have come back into the region on at least two, three occasions now, I think. And the first time there was here, a friend of mine, uh, also she also works at the clinic. She uh, ran into these people in the town of Nadbor, I think it was. And uh, what happened to her is that they quickly held her uh, against her will, started beating her, and then chased her off into the forest while these infected and these other infected, more grotesque looking things were chasing her into the woods. Uh, just by luck of chance, she survived the whole ordeal. And that was NATO who did that? Yeah, that, that was NATO who did it. I was going to, you know, hopefully meet them myself. Uh, you know, because they said that they're here to uh, terminate the infection, mm -hmm. uh, or not infection, the um, uh, parasite. Right, yes. To rescue us, the people in Livonia. So, you know, I had my hopes up to meet her, uh, and then I hear over the radio from my friend that this happened to her, and uh, more similar things happening in the days following when they were here the second time too. Right, I see. But that's incredible. That's that sounds so much against everything that NATO is in my, you know, in my personal opinion. Did they seem renegade? Like did they see like seem like they were just maybe soldiers uh, or ex NATO or NATO didn't really have any control over them and they were just following their own uh, prerogative or did did it feel like it was an official NATO operation? I can't comment on it fully as I've never gotten the chance to actually meet them. 
uh, every time, single time I've tried, they've either been in a fight that I hear in the distance, and I don't really want to walk into a gunfight happening uh, of at the risk of my own life. And uh, well, the only experience I have is my friend uh, when she met them. Uh, what I did see, at least, that I can comment on is I saw uh, a dead NATO soldiers, soldier, one guy, on top of an apartment building where my friend was uh, previously in Nelbourne. Uh He had a full uniform on, uh, <clears> he had a patch <throat> on his uniform, it seemed an, like an official NATO soldier, at the right. very least. So that was a dead one. So, so apparently this person was in conflict with someone. Um, the next question yes, then um, would be, who is NATO in conflict with here in Livonia? That I do not know. I've heard, I do not remember his name. But what I think, I will not say it with fact, 100% facts, uh, but have you seen people that wear these blue arm armbands uh, around yes. the region? I, I have, yes. Uh, from what I've heard, they are fighting them with a statement of saying that they are protecting us against NATO. Yes, I've heard I've heard something along these lines from one of them before actually. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. Really, so. yeah, what I know really about the conflict between NATO and people in the region here. So what is your end game? You're just trying to get out and in the meantime you're trying to help people? Is that pretty much it? Yeah, pretty much it. I would very much like to go home and not really be here in the world now. Yes, yeah, I. The first chance that I get, I will leave and go home. As I long understand. As, Likewise, you know, my health and the body stays uh, sound. Yes, absolutely. Well, th that that would pretty much be it. Could you state your age, uh, your name, and your age again for the camera, please? Yep. Uh, as mentioned before, my name is Lucas Linge, and I'm 29 years old. Okay, Lucas. That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. And there we have it. Good interview, Lucas. Thank you very much. Super interesting. Hey. Yeah, no worries. Let me shake your hand. Mm. Oh, I'm very grateful. It was a shame that such a well-spoken and helpful person like Lucas had just been left behind by his group. But for the survivors in Livonia, maybe his ways and his skill would end up being a saving grace. I couldn't stop thinking about his other statements though. More NATO trouble and now it was blue on blue. Blue armbands against the international peacekeeping force supposed to bring stability to the region. Lost in my thoughts and trying to understand what was going on, I followed my companions to the prison itself. Here I would spend some more time interviewing friendly survivors. Little did I know that I'd end up in a pretty dangerous situation. Okay, let's go then. Could you please state your name and your age for the camera? Hello, my name is Taras. I am 34. Taras, 34. Well, thank you for your time, Taras. Um, what is your story? Uh, how did you get here? Um, maybe how did you get with this group? It's a little long, but I, I try to keep it dog. as short as possible for you. So. I need a you toggle. Know, I used How? To, I used to be uh, out on the rally, you know, I'm a good driver, right? Oh, oh God. Uh, so mm -hmm. I take a little trip out to see the surrounding country. And ending up here uh, when this shit going down and uh, well, having little accident, not able to leaving. Then meeting some of these nice people along the way, and well, that's uh, that's pretty much how it is now, uh, you know, ever since been with them. What accident did you have? I, uh, you know, it's a stupid car crash, man, drunk man, out at night. Of course. <laughs> ah, I see. Okay, I hope you, I hope you didn't get injured. I hope you walked away from it. Okay. Maybe you heard me speak to other people and then ask them about, um, like you know international organization activity that they've seen nato has seemed to uh, uh but you know play a role here and actually not be very kind or helpful to the to the civilians um i was just told that when people tried to flee the country they were slaughtered by what looked like a military um we don't know who they belong to but have you seen anything like this only hearing stories Same. honestly no good stories very bad stories but uh, no seeing with my own eyes so I can't what really role are you playing emily that. 
Um, what's the most what 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 got stuck in your head? Is there something you witnessed where you're like, oh my god, I, I'll, I'll never forget this. This is the craziest thing I've seen. Bandits, a lot mm -hmm. of fucking bandits around, man. You know, anywhere I take in the car, somebody behind something hiding away like little rat, and then they jumping out at you with guns done telling you screaming at you whatever they screaming you know whatever like putting hands up you know stopping car and this happening every day man everywhere asking just about anybody uh, something like this happening to them i assure you to me that's pretty crazy uh, i see yes i've i've run into uh, the bandits myself unfortunately uh wasn't a pleasant experience um, so what is your, like, end game, if you will? Are you trying to get out of the country where maybe you were somewhere before you came here? And then the question would be, where were you? Honestly, I, no offense, I can't really sing. But not really trying to leave anytime soon. I, I having, I having little business around here nowadays, and uh, we're trying to do something good here, you know, uh, as I tell telling you earlier, um, you know, trying to maybe, maybe help everybody around here in a way. Well, uh, that's pretty much it for, for, for now. You don't want to tell me where you were before you came here? Did I get that? No, I cannot, no. Okay, I understand. Well, if you could state your name and your age again for the end of the tape, please. My name is Taras, 34. Taras34. Thank you so much, Taras, for your time. And uh, yeah, many thanks. Okay, that was great. Thank you so much. Oof. You're a great reporter. Oh, thank you. Right. I'm doing my best. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm a bit repetitive with the questions, but it's like you need like a baseline yeah, of information from everyone so you can compare mm -hmm. later. No, uh, you know, the more you're asking, the, yeah, like, uh, the, more, the better you're getting, right? I mean, I've, I have a lot of experience with reporting, especially in conflict situations. But the thing is, right now, um, getting the base information and like trying to corroborate stories I heard from multiple people is the strongest way forward. Um, if somebody comes in and like has a new story or, oh, I saw this happen, then we can follow up on that maybe as a group. Um, but for now, I feel like that's the strongest way forward, to be honest. Uh, you know, and we we getting there, you know, and a uh, few more days... You know days, what, guys, uh, I just realized, that red beam is the one I had stolen from me. Where did you guys get it from? Out of nowhere, a man in an orange jacket showed up and started talking about a car. Who was this guy? I didn't know it at this time, but in just a few minutes, I was going to be in a pretty dangerous situation. Probably best. Oh, shit, how much did you pay for it? Can I buy it back? Uh, I mean, sure, you can buy it back if you want. We're buying for 6,000? How he having key if it got stolen, man? It, it, it's, it's difficult to say, like, because the people that stole it, they, they, they had a green Land Rover, so, like, you have a green Land Rover and you have a red BMW, like, it sort of doesn't oh, look really? good, does it? Or is it not just suspicious that you just stole it yourself and you could give it back? I mean, hell no. Is that an accusation, man? I mean, because it's a little bit suspicious that you have both like they had a green Land Rover and they stole my BMW. You know what? This isn't our car. I've I've never seen it here before. Oh, no, yours gonna have it? No, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> yes. Okay, looking. I'll be honest with you, man. Okay, since you, you see me like nice guy, right? Yeah. So um, I you knowing um. So uh, a little, little bit back, like a couple, maybe three, four days ago, uh, I finding a little key, and uh, you knowing, uh, I, I finding this car out in the woods, uh, and I locking it up with the key, and then somebody stealing it from me. Well, guess what? I, this car happening to be somewhere, and I trying the the keys, and they unlocking my door, and well, I getting in and taking my fucking car with me, you know. So, so you did steal it from the trader, you did steal it from me. I didn't steal it from you, I, I, I bought it, but I fucking... Well, somebody stole it from me, so it looks like we have a little complication here, man. It looks like we both get it's stolen it. from you. <laughs> it's a little bit complicated, but... Mine was like, you know, I was just in the shop and, you know, pulled up in the shop and you stole it from outside. It's a little, little bit more scummy. 
Oh. So, uh, he, he's unconfused, man. So, if you saying this is your car, and I having the key, where the fuck you getting your key from, man? Or maybe we both have the same keys? But try yours. Tell you what, how about you open it right now, man? Me. I, I need to go That's little there, convenient, man. I've only got these these keys on me for a different one. That's uh, missing a battery. Go ahead. I mean, isn't, isn't that a, little for convenient for this situation it's right now? <clears throat> I, I, I mean, can tell you, you can something. Wait, I can go get them. I saw two mm. red cars like this one, you know. Oh, this car. <laughs> from forest. He he just told me that he had it in the forest and it got stolen from the and he found it in the trade zone. Like, I mean, if shit hits the fan, like, Toby will find it. Hold to him, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I never but Kitty, here's your uh, fist bump. Welcome. Thing passing by, I say, okay. Well, that's a yeah, I'm not sure that's what you said. No, 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 I'm not sure. I, I do this for a living and I think oh, you're lying to me. Alrighty, alrighty. I have a question. Who, who, you know, you see me like man, like knowing his way around these There's parts, someone else coming. You know, uh, Hi. That's the... Jesse, we're good. Oh, hey, Jesse. Anyway, um, you know, uh, you, you, you happening to be uh, with, the, uh, with any skills. friends around here, man? I bet. No, I literally live between fucking here and the hunting trader. I'm right, driving between the hunting trader and Brenner, just killing animals. Right, right. The two guys so will fight, and the Swiss man will have away so with all the profits. The people that were driving this car, man, there was four of them, man. So Thank you for the fist fight. You're welcome. Alone. This is how we roll, girl. No, I assuming. I I'm sorry. I I'm just mean to assume you. Right, your gender. Sure. Mm. I was going to actually. I was going to well, this then jacket, this jacket, isn't your car, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty oh, sure it is. That's a fucking lie, man. That's no, suspicious. Why, why, no. man? I, I see you driving with four people, man. Let me, yeah, let me go get the keys. I'll come back and then I'll unlock it and show you that it's mine. No, I have a. I How did you find us, Kitty? Question for you. So, uh, these these people that actually driving this car, you know, uh, we not on so good terms with them. So, man, I have a question for you, my friend. Um, What's that? Who the fuck are you? My name is James. I told you what my name is. Alright, um, you, you, having, you little happening little to having any armbands on you, man? No, I don't have any armbands on me. I think you should leave me alone. Uh, are you sure about that? I'm fairly sure, but I think you should leave me alone. Uh, I mean, looking, this car belongs to some very escalate. bad fucking people. And if you're this part of this very bad fucking people, man, we're gonna have a problem here, man. I think you should leave me alone. Thanks, Kitty. Uh, it's gentlemen, can we... can we... Like take a break here for a second. I think tensions are rising. Maybe Mr. we should just um, calm down. I, Wait, now, I, think leave me alone. I feel like maybe we just take a break and everybody goes somewhere else to cool down a bit. Constructive way. This guy way. is who I think he is. This asshole doesn't deserve to fucking breathe. I tell you. Difference for you guys. I've got an antidote for this. Do any of you? Okay, whoa! Uh, alright, alright, relax, man, relax. No need I to was... doing well, anything I'm, stupid, I'm alright? I'm gonna walk away now and you're gonna leave me the fuck alone. Do you understand? That's okay, sir. That's all, all good. Though I didn't know it at that time, the green glowing thing in his hand was Parks, a bioweapon in gas form, able to kill anything. Instinctively, I reeled back after seeing it. His comment about an antidote alarmed me. But what? What is that stuff in his hand? Does anybody know? Because I mean, I think it would make sense for him to have the antidote on him Holy if he was shit. carrying something like that around. Hey, Damn it! I didn't get it on. Away. I didn't get, get it on away. tape. I I think we need to have a talk with this man. Let's go back inside, this everyone. Come on, come on. It is. We speak in the house where we have a stove. <sighs> he's a bad man. If I he's who I think he is, <laughs> he's a very bad man. Just like his all other friends he having. He's lying about being alone. He's not alone. Everybody inside the barracks, put the fucking hands up or you're oh, all gonna die. Everyone inside the barracks, put your hands up or you're all gonna die. Hey, get, get inside, man. Get inside. Come on. I want to see everyone outside with their hands up or I'm gonna start shooting. Give me 10 seconds to listen to my demands. Right, oh my start god. Throwing gas in. I want everyone out with their hands up. Running out. What the fuck, man? Watch out, man. Watch out. Watch out, man. He's somewhere outside. Watch out. 
Be safe, be safe. Vicky, be being careful, man. He's somewhere outside the wall. Oh, fuck, watch out! He's throwing it, man. Get away from that shit. We gotta get the fuck out of here! What the fuck?